The chemists analyze solutions to learn how much of a certain substance is present in a sample. They may use methods of volumetric analysis. These techniques involve the careful measurement of sample and reagent volumes. The most common types of glassware used for volumetric analysis are the burette, the pipette, and the volumetric flask. The burette is a long calibrated tube fitted with a stopcock valve and nozzle. To use the burette, first rinse it with deionized water by filling and emptying several times. The rinse water must be flushed out so that its residue does not dilute the reagent to be used in the tube. To do this, use a funnel to add 5 milliliters of the reagent to the burette. In removing the funnel, be sure to clear the neck of the burette before twisting the funnel downward. If you don't, the stem of the funnel may break the glass at the top of the tube. To rinse the burette with a titrant, hold the tube in the near horizontal position and rotate it to rinse as much of the inner sides as possible. Then discard the rinse. Repeat this step twice more, then fill the burette with the same reagent. Fully open the stopcock to flush out any air bubble in the nozzle. If the bubble escapes during the titration, error is introduced. Stubborn bubbles lodged near the stopcock can be removed by giving the burette one or two vigorous shakes while it is draining. As the camera pans upward, observe how the back half of each line gradually becomes hidden by its front half as the camera's view becomes horizontal. To avoid parallax error, your view line also must be absolutely horizontal. Adjust the initial reagent level to anywhere between 0 to 2 milliliters. Hold your finger or a white piece of paper behind the burette to facilitate the reading and read from the bottom curve of the meniscus, estimating the hundredths place. Now you are ready to begin the titration. Initially, you may add the titrant rapidly while swirling the Erlmeyer flask. The indicator will begin to change color in regions of high titrant concentration, but with swirling, the color will disappear before the equivalence point is reached. Slow down the titration when the color change becomes more pervasive and begins to linger throughout the flask. Add the titrant dropwise at the end. At the very end of the titration, you can add a split drop by touching a hanging drop of titrant on the nozzle to a stirring rod, then stirring it into the solution. You are looking for the one drop or split drop that causes the color to change for at least 10 to 15 seconds. If you are careless, however, perhaps working too quickly, you may overshoot the endpoint. In the case of this acid-base titration with the indicator phenolphthalein, the bright pink color shows that this has happened and that this trial must be done over. For good trials, be certain to record your final burette reading directly into your lab manual. The pipette is another piece of commonly used volumetric glassware. The vacuum bulb is squeezed to remove the air from it. Then its white plastic adapter is placed firmly against the top of the pipette. Do not remove the plastic tip and insert the end of the pipette into the bulb. This common technique error is guaranteed to yield poor results. Allow the rubber bulb to expand to draw the liquid sample into the pipette. Let the liquids level pass the etched mark on the pipette. Then quickly remove the bulb and seal the top with your thumb. Now slightly release your thumb, which needs to be completely dry, to allow the liquid to drop slowly out of the pipette until the lower curve of the meniscus is aligned with the etched line of the pipette. Then clamp down firmly again. Move the pipette over to the receiving vessel and loosen your thumb to allow the liquid to drain. Then touch the tip of the pipette to the side of the receiving flask to remove the hanging drop. Do not blow out the small amount of liquid at the tip of the pipette. On the side of the pipette you'll see the letters TD, which means to deliver. This means the pipette has been calibrated with the capillary residue in the tip factored in. A volumetric flask, on the other hand, is calibrated to contain a specific volume of liquid at a given temperature. 
If you inspect the label printed on a volumetric flask, you will see the designation TC, meaning to contain, indicating that the flask, when filled to its mark, will contain a certain volume of liquid. When filling the volumetric flask, never pour the sample directly down the neck of the flask. The reason for this is that a drop clinging to the neck of the flask may roll into the solution after the flask has been brought to the proper volume, introducing error. Instead, fit the flask with a long stem funnel, then add the liquid through it. This technique will keep the glass of the upper neck of the flask dry. When the liquid's level approaches the etched line, remove the funnel and use a pipette to add the sample dropwise directly to the surface of the liquid. Again, do not allow the liquid to contact the dry upper neck of the volumetric flask. Following these techniques will help you to minimize error when using volumetric glassware and therefore obtain the best possible experimental results. Music